Hey everybody, it's Jason Waha here, and once again it is time for my client Demi's vlog. And we started the week off with a closed grip bench press for his max effort work. Uh, but we're all pretty happy with that. Uh, for supplemental work, of course, he does uh, normal pause benching with a wider grip. Uh, pinkies right around on rings. Uh, you know, which is usually should be around our baseline grip. Obviously, we, we adjust that for certain maxes adjusted for different supplemental work. Um, but it's, it's a good starting point. I always remind people of that. I think most people will find, unless they, they have very extreme proportions, we're usually going to get pretty good stacking uh, with pinkies around the rings. You know, you can fine-tune that a bit, uh, but in his case, that looks to be right about where he has it. Uh, again, we tend to, to really build pectorals easy there, uh, which, you know, again, is our primary goal with our bench work, right, for our actual rep work. It's what we're trying to do. All right, afterwards, he does one-arm dumbbell rows. Of course, I had to uh, show him some of my clips on these uh, so that he understands uh, what I'm looking for on this lift. Um, I've done a lot of clips on, on this lately showing people that I really want them pulling up to the chest, not the hip. I want them bent over more if we want to build the most lats and get the most muscle and most, most mileage out of this exercise. Um, I understand for many people that's a point of controversy, but it really shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. Um, and I think particularly now that people have seen more shirtless stuff from me again and realize I've got a pretty big back and I don't do anything special for it, just these basic movements. Again, just doing them correctly, uh, applying enough tension, enough volume over time, you guys would be surprised. It, back training is just not as complex as people want to make it out to be. It doesn't require squeezing anything, just working a couple of good angles with a lot of tension and uh, reasonable ranges of motion. Again, assuming that volumes and overload are appropriate. All right, he also does skull crushers. Now we might have to rotate th these around a little bit. This does happen quite a bit with, with different lifters. I love this lift, but be aware that it can be a little hard on tendons and we do need to rotate it from time to time. All right, we rotate it from time to time and usually work in band work to build the tendons. In his case, I have him continuing to do band work because we need so much tricep specialization at the moment that uh, we, we really do need to do this. It's something that we have to have to keep his tendons healthy if we're going to push skull crushers pretty hard, All right? Uh, and of course, in my own training, I might up my own tricep uh, specialization a little bit the more I look at it, you know, for me personally. All right. Uh, he also does, of course, barbell rows. Of course, this is his deadlift, actually. So <laughs> the barbell rows are up next. We didn't get a PR. He's like, yeah, 240 just felt really heavy today. That's 240 kg. Um, that's okay. We're not going to PR all the time, right? His deadlift is his best lift. We've got some really big squat PRs recently. His bench is going up. I'm not that worried if his deadlift is stagnating just a little bit. Of course, we're also getting a little bit of overuse from the good mornings and stuff. Again, signs that we need to make make some adjustments. Um, and he's also got to adapt to all this new equipment, right? He's got the reverse hyper now. He's got a belt squat now. Um, it's a lot being thrown at him in terms of, of novel movements. He's going to need time to adapt to those. So it, it's not unusual for, at this point, his best lift, the deadlift, to stall a little. Um, he's definitely started noticing this, this week, though, a bit of overuse uh, signs on using this straight bar for the good mornings. So he's going to go over to the, the SSB, which is what I've told him to do. But, my God, look at what he's doing. He's got 140 kilogram on there. Okay. That's 308 pounds for my American followers who use Freedom Units. It's over 300 pounds, guys. Okay. Getting up there. We're getting pretty respectable. Now, I've explained to him, of course, when he goes to the SSB, it's going to get a lot harder. I think that throws people off when they go to the safety squat bar. So to, to put into context, people see me working with like 260 on it for work sets and realize what I deadlift and realize how strong I've been on certain good mornings. It puts in perspective how much harder that bar is. Okay. I personally lose anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds of my strength when I go to that bar. So I've warned him, be ready, be conservative with it. The moment arms are longer. 
course, he's, had, he's uh, working a little bit with getting these belt squats down. They're a little bit of a fight because he's, he's tall, he's got long femurs. Really trying to get into the groove on these and to not hold onto the handles because I've told him, look, your quads are going to suffer if you grab the handles. Okay. you got to learn to get those hips pushed back. And you, of course, he's having to lean forward pretty hard to stabilize on this. Again, belt squats can be a little tricky for taller guys to get dialed in. But is it working the muscles the way he's doing it here? Yes, absolutely. Quads, glutes, adductors are all being worked. So, you know, happy with it. Then, of course, here's his reverse hypers. Now he's got the belt squat and the reverse hypers. It's going to change a lot of stuff. Uh, again, people know how I feel about the reverse hypers. I'd like him to control these a little bit more if possible. Uh, it's not bad right now. I would like to see the swinging control just a hair more. Now, people will say, well, can't you control it completely? Not really. Not unless you go down to, to almost no weight. And the reason is these reverse hypers, that pendulum is on roller bearings with Zerk fittings and, you know, so that you grease them and everything. It is on roller bearings. It's not just normal metal on metal. You have roller bearings with, with crease and fittings on them. It swings really, really easy. And then we have weight swinging, and that's part of the idea. But the thing is, we control it to some extent. We control it the best that we can, but it's not. It's always going to be some swing to it. And it's desirable for there to be some swing. And that's okay. It will actually swing no matter what you do. So just work with it. It will always swing more than you think it is when you see it on camera. That's the main thing I've always noticed with uh, the reverse hyper. No matter how much you think you're controlling it, it is probably swinging more than you feel it swinging. And that's just the nature of the, of the machine, and that's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because it, it puts that traction that we want at the bottom. All right, um, dynamic effort days, of course, uh, we do add incline benching on his dynamic days after he does speed benching, so you're seeing some of that there. Uh, of course, we always do all his tricep work. We're going to have to do a really, really continue to do a heavy tricep focus at him. He's got to bring his arms up. They're a biggest limiting factor in his benching right now, and as they get thicker, his bench will continue to climb. Uh, so we, we, again, a lot of extensions, both with weights and with bands. We continue to do these for him, high priority. Hey, just like things like uh, his lower back is a priority, hamstrings are a priority. All these things are priorities. We want to get big everywhere, but these things need just a little bit more for him. They're his weakest links. Um, then, of course, his dynamic effort lower day, we repeat all the other stuff, but we do speed boxes with the safety bar. And I'm having him work on these. I don't quite like uh, what's going on with the elbows here in the handle position. Uh, just an FYI, I'm having him work on adjusting that. And then, of course, he does speed conventional pulls. So I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.